What is going on guys and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show. Hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. Today we're going to be going over my picks for this year's March Madness All-Tournament team. The players that I think really had the best individual performances throughout the entire tournament. Now just before we get into my picks, just keep in mind that I am filming and posting this video just before the national championship game between Baylor and Gonzaga actually happens. So of course those stats from that game are not going to be reflective in this video. Also, I tried to pick players who had a bit bigger of a sample size, so I wasn't really considering any players who play on teams who got out really in the first or second round. Um, but anyways, let's get right into the video. So the first guy that we have today is the sophomore guard from UCLA. It's Johnny Juzang. And what a fantastic tournament he had. What a really fantastic season as a whole he had. But you know, you look at a UCLA team who had a great Cinderella story, and Johnny Juzang really played the main part in taking them from the first four to the final four with some big, big upsets, and of course, putting up some big scoring numbers. UCLA was a team that really all year had a lot of their scoring pressure on their starting lineup. Didn't really get a ton of productivity from their bench, and of course, Johnny Juzang led the way scoring. Also in 2021, UCLA loses their second best scorer um, with an injury, so even more pressure on Johnny Juzang to be able to step up, especially in this tournament, and he did exactly that. Um, starting in the first four, he had 23 points and then 27, 17, 13, 28, and 29. I thought he got really good, especially by the end of the tournament, but again, four games out of the six games that they played in the March Madness, he was over 20 points, and it's just so, so impressive. Um, his ability to sort of create his own shots, make tough shots, really take over the game, I found to be really, really just incredible what he was able to do, especially against Gonzaga. Um, but I thought also, you know, looking particularly at the game against Michigan, there was a lot of times where UCLA, especially in the first half of games, had really trouble getting going offensively. And it was really, you know, Johnny Juzang who stepped up, was making those tough shots again, and was really able to score the basketball until those other guys on UCLA were able to sort of find their rhythm offensively and eventually help him out. I'm um, so impressive. I think he raised his draft stock, especially against Gonzaga. I think he really did look like an NBA-ready player. You know, usually when you watch games, you can tell the guys who you think could be busts and guys who really could potentially develop into a guy who's a role player or even higher in the NBA. And I think Johnny Juzang is that guy. Um, I was so impressed by him over the course of the entire tournament. Even his ability to rebound, which not a lot of people talk about, but he really did look like an NBA guy. Definitely deserves to be on this team. Next up, we have another sophomore guard from Oral Roberts. We got Max A. Smith. And Max A. Smith came into this tournament as the leading scorer in all of Division I basketball with 24 and a half points. But I think a lot of people still doubted him. Coming from a small conference, you know, there's always that wonder when you play teams of a higher caliber, how good are they actually going to end up being? And I think Max A. Smith, along with even Kevin O'Banner, um, who's also great for Oral Roberts, really showed that these are talented, talented players. Um, but of course, Max A. Smith really played the leading roles in them to upset Ohio State, upset Florida, and then come really, really close to Arkansas, um, putting up 29, 26, and 25 over the course of the tournament. Also had 14 assists over the course of the three games. Also was on the glass a little, some act some activity defensively. I thought Max A. Smith played really, really well. He's got a great ability um, to create his own shots. He's a fantastic, fantastic, and really talented player at being able to drive into the lane and score underneath the basket. Also, his ability to get to the free throw line as well, I think. Um, he's a little inconsistent when he's shooting the three ball, um, but overall, just a phenomenal score. Really fills up the stat sheets. Um, but, you know, he had to be in this video. You look at a player who is really the backbone of his team, and Max Aismas is that guy. He played every single minute um, in the March Madness tournament. He also played every single minute for his team. I'm pretty sure in the Summit League Conference tournament as well. So, you know, this guy really, really stepped up at the back end of his season and in the postseason. Definitely deserves to be on this all-tournament team, though, um, that I'm making now. Next up, we got Buddy Bayheim, the junior guard, of course, from Syracuse, and, and he was just playing fantastic. He, he's one of my favorite players, I think, in college basketball to watch. And the reason being for that is just his ability to just score the basketball. He's a player who can take over a game. 
Um, Syracuse in general is really, really well coached, but I think the way Buddy Bayheim fits into that system is so great. He's an absolute sniper from deep. But what I really liked about Buddy Bayheim, as I sort of mentioned in other videos, is the step up that he had from last year to this year. And if you thought he was just on the team or got a scholarships before because obviously of Jim Bayheim, that's not the case. And he took such a big step up this year in his ability to dribble, create his own shots. And not just be sort of that just catch and shoot kind of guy. He's a real, real leader of this team. And you look at what they were able to do not only in their own conference tournament, but then he ends up putting, you know, 30 points up against San Diego State. They beat a very veteran West Virginia team with 25 points and then only 12 in a really slow offensive game that they had against Houston. But he also rebounded the basketball, was active defensively, and puts up great shooting numbers. Um, yeah, shot really, really well, especially in those first two games. Um, but Buddy Beheim is just a very, very fun player to watch. Honorable mention um, at the guard position, I was also debating putting on the junior guard from Baylor, Davion Mitchell, of course, playing in tonight's national championship game. Reason I didn't put him on is just because his scoring numbers aren't as high as the other guys, but you look at over the course of this tournament, you know, a all in double digit scoring his last game against Houston 12 points 11 assists so he does a great job of not only scoring but facilitating the basketball and of course obviously he is one of the best defenders in the country so again when you look at sort of a guy who's a backbone of the team really the glue guy of the team I think that is Mitchell for Baylor and even though a guy like Jared Butler might score more than him I think Mitchell is really the guy that keeps this team together and just does everything that Baylor sort of needs him to do moving on to forwards next up we have the senior forward from Arkansas in Justin Smith and what a great tournament he had um, Arkansas is a team that plays really really fast but Justin Smith was really the leader of this offense um, for quite a few of their first couple of games in this tournament and of course with what he does you know not only inside the paint his ability to block shots but overall just rebound the basketball as well um, he had to be on this list um, they started off against Colgate. He had 29 points, Texas Tech 20 points, then 12 and 10. But he had two games where he was over double-digit rebounds. He had 13 rebounds against Colgate and 14 against Oral Roberts. And again, Arkansas is a team who, did, who didn't really need Justin Smith to score the basketball, um, but he put up great scoring numbers. He shot the ball very well in all four of their games, and I think the rebounds really need him to be on this team. Um, Arkansas did end up losing to Baylor, um, but they did end up playing four, so we did see enough sample size from Justin Smith to really feel good uh, about him being on this list. He also did a great job sort of facilitating um, from inside, I thought, also pretty good defensively. Um, so yeah, he's on this list. And then the last guy that we have is Drew Timmy, the sophomore forward from Gonzaga, who actually won the postseason award as the nation's best power forward. But you look at what he did over the course of the tournament, 10 points, 30 points, 22, 23, 25 Rebounds the basketball for them as well, and Gonzaga is at their best when Drew Timmy cannot be stopped. We've seen that quite a few times over the course of this tournament. Um, the 30 against Oklahoma was huge. Oklahoma started that game off scoring the basketball very well, but I thought Drew Timmy did a great job, just like he has done all season long for Gonzaga, and you know, score the basketball and really propel them to victory. I think Drew Timmy has not been terrific. Sometimes defensively, I thought although he was solid offensively against UCLA, he wasn't really good down low, um, you know, on his inside defense. Um, but I don't think that's something that's necessarily reoccurring. Um, I don't know if, you know, Drew Timmy, he, he will get drafted at some point. I don't know how well it's, it's going to translate over to the NBA. Um, but in terms of specifically what he did in this year's March Madness tournament, scoring numbers were fantastic. Great job rebounding. Even facilitated the basketball a little bit. Gonzaga overall has great ball movement. Can't do that if, you know, your, your guys, even down low, are not sort of facilitating the basketball as well. I thought he did a great job inside. He's really, really dominant getting to the paint, dunking, uh, finding the easy layups as well. I think Gonzaga, because of their ball movement, gets a lot of those shots as well. Um, and he even gets to the free throw line as well. Shot 14 free throws against Oklahoma, got to the line a pair of times pretty much in every one of their games. Um, so I think, you know, Timmy, again, had a fantastic tournament, definitely deserves to be on this list as well as receiving that postseason award that I was talking about before. Um, but anyways, guys, if you did make it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comment section below. Do you agree with the five guys that I talked about in this video? 
or do you sort of think that I missed somebody? Who would you guys have on your all-tournament team? But anyways, guys, if you did enjoy today's video, please do me a huge favor. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy the video. But anyways, guys, if you did make it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time.